Warning, all components of this synthesis are toxic and highly corrosive. Chlorosulfonic acid produces highly irritating vapors and can easily burn through clothing and flesh. Proper safety equipment is mandatory. Copious amounts of corrosive hydrogen chloride gas are also produced during this reaction. Be sure to work outside or in a well-ventilated area. So yeah, we're making a super acid today. And while I'd love to go all the way and make fluoro into monic acid, I still like the necessary hydrogen fluoride, so that'll have to be a later project. Instead, I'll be synthesizing a small amount of chlorosulfonic acid, which is actually pretty close in terms of how terrifyingly corrosive it is. To make chlorosulfonic acid, only two reagents are necessary, phosphorus pentachloride and concentrated sulfuric acid. I only have a limited amount of phosphorus pentachloride though, so this will have to be a pretty small batch. As with most of my specialty reagents, I got my sample of phosphorus pentachloride from this channel's official sponsor, Backyard Science 2000, who runs an eBay store which I've linked to below. He sells a ton of different hard to find chemicals, so if you ever need something like phosphorus pentachloride, be sure to check him out. To start this preparation, 20 grams of phosphorus pentachloride was measured out. You can see it comes in these nice greenish crystals, which to me smelled a lot like weird parmesan cheese. And before anyone freaks out, yes, I did put on my respirator and other protective equipment. I just happened to catch a whiff of the pentachloride before beginning. Anyways, the whole 20 gram portion was added to a small round bottom flask, and a short path distillation was set up around it. Then, 5 milliliters of sulfuric acid was gradually dripped in. This caused a whole bunch of hydrogen chloride to bubble out of solution, and thankfully, most of this was caught by a water bubbler trap that I set up beforehand. During this reaction, the phosphorus pentachloride directly chlorinates the sulfuric acid, kicking off a hydrogen and one oxygen in the process. The hydrogen atoms go on to become hydrogen chloride, and the oxygen combines with the remaining phosphorus and chlorine to form phosphoryl chloride. Phosphoryl chloride is a liquid like chlorosulfonic acid, but it has a lower boiling point, so distillation is the best means of separating the two. Well, best being a relatively mild term. The process does involve boiling a highly corrosive superacid after all. So once the sulfuric acid was completely added, the temperature was cranked up and the phosphoryl chloride was allowed to distill over. Once the temperature hit 150 degrees Celsius, the first fraction was isolated and I started collecting the relatively pure superacid. It took about an hour in total to complete, but in the end, I had roughly 5 milliliters of fuming chlorosulfonic acid. Now, since this was my first time working with a superacid, I figured I would start the reactions off with something fairly tame, household ammonia solution. As expected, the chlorosulfonic acid immediately boiled and fumed angrily on contact with the ammonia, showing just how reactive this stuff is, even with a weak base. Now, if ammonia is a weak base, what happens with a stronger base? For example, solid sodium hydroxide. Honestly, this wasn't terribly violent, since little to no water was present, but it was still exothermic enough to be interesting. Alright, this next reaction was inspired by another chemistry YouTuber named Chemical Force, who made something called permanganeal fluoride by mixing fluorosulfonic acid with potassium permanganate. His demo was pretty awesome, but it made me wonder, what happens when you mix chlorosulfonic acid with permanganate? Well, let's find out. For this special reaction, I decided to change things up and film against a white background so I could fully capture the vivid colors. Wow, that's pretty neat. Let's try that again, but from a different angle. Man, that's something else. The greenish fog is most likely the result of permanganeal chloride decomposing immediately after its formation, due to its high instability. I tried reacting some paper with it, but as you can see, none of it survived long enough to do anything interesting. 
so let's try adding something flammable to the permanganate before the superacid. Here, you can see I poured a little acetone onto the permanganate before adding the chlorosulfonic acid. Nothing interesting happened at first, but when I added the superacid, in spite of what it may look like, these aren't detonations. Whatever is happening is causing the acetone to immediately boil and spray white smoke everywhere. At one point, there did appear to be some combustion, but it quickly died off, apparently choked out by the acidic fumes. This reaction honestly brings into question how the chlorosulfonic acid interacts with the acetone by itself. So I tried that next and got a pretty neat result. I'm not really sure about the red liquid's chemical makeup, but whatever it is, it seemed fairly water insoluble, and it smelled sweet and solvent-like, kind of like the silly string you get at kids' parties. Alright, one last reaction. Let's see how the superacid reacts with the reactive metal, specifically magnesium powder. Hmm, that's kind of weird. It just smoked a little. Maybe introducing a bit of fire will make things interesting. Yep, that definitely made things more interesting. It's honestly impossible to convey just how insanely bright this was in person. Ah, magnesium. You never fail to put on a show. Okay, quick bonus reaction. I didn't have a lot of sodium at the time, but I did manage to salvage this small piece, which surprisingly didn't explode on contact with the acid until I heated it up with my blowtorch. Alright guys, there you have it, making chlorosulfonic acid from sulfuric acid and phosphorus pentachloride. Thank you all very much for watching, I had a great time making this video, and I hope you all learned something in the process. If you like what you see, consider subscribing to my channel. Trust me, I have a number of amazing videos planned out or in production that you do not want to miss. And if you'd like to help support me and my work, consider donating or becoming my patron on Patreon. The links, as always, are down below. A special thanks goes out to all the Lab Coats patrons. This channel truly wouldn't be where it is today without them. Stay safe, everyone, and I'll catch you next time. Lab Coats, out.